Hi, this is Mr. Weston. Today we're doing a CUDA worksheet tutorial on adding and subtracting decimals. One thing you got to know about adding and subtracting decimals, especially if there's negatives in here like there is in this worksheet, is you got to understand your positive and negative rules. So one of the rules is if you have the same sign that's positive, positive, or negative, negative, then you're going to add those two numbers together, and then you keep the sign. Okay, so you're going to keep the sign of the, the numbers because both of them have the same sign. I like to think of it as they're on the same team. So if they're on the same team, that means they're going to combine their points. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at an example like that. So I think there's one up here. Okay, so classic example. They're both positive. So most of us are familiar with how to do problems like this if they're both positive. So we're going to first add these two together, and then we're just going to keep the sign uh, the same. And it's, since it's positive, we're going to keep it positive. So I'm going to go ahead and just write it. It doesn't matter which one we put on top or anything like that. One thing you need to know, though, is if we have anything involving decimals with addition and subtraction, we need to line up our decimal points. So notice that I'm going to put this 1 and this 7 right here. That way, they're in a straight line. So when I'm done adding, the decimal is going to drop straight down. Okay, So this this vertical movement of the decimal is very important. Now, one thing you'll notice, though, is it creates a gap right here. So I don't have any numbers written right here. You need to fill that in. I think it's very important that you do, in fact, fill it in and not leave it blank because I see a lot of students that just incorrectly do some things, especially with subtraction. So I'm just going to add here. I'm going to go vertically one uh, column at a time. So I'm going to start with a thousandths place, and I add 5 plus 0 is 5, 0 plus 0 is 0, 7 plus 3 is 10. I'm going to carry the 1 up. Let me show that in a different color because that was 10. Let me go ahead and write that. So now we can see that this is clearly 10, but you can't just write 10 in one spot. That's why you carry the 1 up. Okay. Uh, notability makes this a little bit easier to show, so I really like this program. So 1 plus 3 plus 1 is 5, so our answer is 5.005, or 5 and 5 thousandths. And that's our answer there. Let's move on to another one, this time with uh, negative signs. So these are negative numbers, and uh, the, because they're on the same team, as I like to say, and we're adding them together, we're just going to keep the sign the same. So I'm just going to go ahead, and it doesn't matter which one I put on top with addition, put 0 0.4 here. They're both negative, so I know my answer is going to be negative because I'm adding these two together. Okay, so I got a negative. I need to make sure my decimals are all lined up. Let me drop it straight down, and I should be ready to proceed. Uh, no, I'm not because I haven't filled in a 0, so I got to drop down a 0 right here, and now I'm ready, okay? So anytime there's uh, columns that don't have place values in them, you're going to want to fill those in. So I have 9 plus 0 is 9. 4 plus 7 is 11. Let me do this in red just to show you again. So ideally, I'd want to put 11 there, but you can't just write two digits in one place. I carry this one over. okay? And I, right now, you may have noticed I'm completely ignoring the negative signs. I'm not even worried about them. I'm just applying my rule at the start, which is why I wrote this, okay? that negative sign. But then I'm just proceeding like they don't even exist. So I have 4 plus 1 plus 0, and that's 5. So negative 5.19, negative 5 and 19 hundredths is my answer, like this. Okay, So that's my answer. That's all I need to do with it. Okay, So that's like the main principle for adding, and you can identify those. I think that would be a smart thing is do all of those problems first. So number 9 is 1. Um, number Okay, so here, let me show you something. Number 14 is also one of those problems. I know you're thinking, there's like, well, there's a subtraction sign. You're not adding a negative. So this is the other thing. I like to consider, let me write this, negative 3.9. I like to consider these two essentially both negative. Okay, So I would consider this a same sides problem. They both have a negative sign in front. Now, I know you're thinking, there's no addition sign. Well, you're still combining them. Okay, addition just means that you're combining things. So if there is just a minus sign, essentially you can assume that we're combining them and write it like this. These are equivalent. You'll often see it written this way initially in lower grades, but in upper grades, you're just going to see it written like this because it's the same thing. Why spend the extra time of doing an addition sign when it's implied? Okay, so 
Just letting you know, the reason why I'm adding these two together is because they have the same sign. Okay, I'm gonna show you what that looked like again. Essentially what I'm doing here, whoops, let me try to get that decimal place. Okay, instead of subtraction, it's really a negative that we're doing here. And now we can just apply our addition rules. So we have nine plus nine. We don't need to have any place values. The decimals are already lined up. Okay, I'm dropping it down. This is 18. Let me change the color on this like I've been doing. So this is 18, nine plus nine. But I need to carry that one up there. And then I just have eight plus three plus one. This time I can write the whole number down because there's nothing left in this column. So I can just drop it down. So 12.8 but I need to remember to keep the sign of the two negatives, okay? They both had a negative sign in front as expressed right there. So I need to keep that negative. Negative 12.8 is my answer. Okay, so I've done a few of those examples, even with ones that appear like they're subtraction. I'm gonna get to number 12 in a second. That one's slightly different, but I just wanna go and highlight a few more that are like that one. Okay, so it doesn't look like those are kind of interesting cases. 21, obviously, is same signs. Um, 27, all the same sign, and I think that's it. So those are all ones that you're going to be applying the same sign addition rule. Let's talk about different signs now. So with different signs, you're going to place the larger number on top. Okay, let me actually move that over. I want to write number here. So you're going to place the larger number on top. Then you're going to subtract. This is the key difference here. Okay, You're going to keep the sign of the larger number after subtracting. I like to consider this different teams. So let's say you're, you're playing a game and uh, the score is 5 to 3. Okay, Your team won 5 to 3. Well, how many points did you win by? You won by 2 points. You subtracted the other team's points. Same thing here. Think of it as different teams and different stands for difference, and difference in math is subtraction. So I th hope that's a, uh, a way that you can remember that you're gonna be subtracting if the signs are different. Now, I've highlighted a few here that require our attention with different signs. Let's go ahead and start with number 10. We see that as different signs, okay? We have a negative, we have a positive, okay? Clearly different. That means we're gonna be finding the difference. We're gonna subtract, and I'm gonna place the larger number on top, okay? So the larger number, 10.9. Now what you're thinking is like, well, 6.1 is is technically a larger number. Yes, I get that. Really, when I'm talking about larger, I'm talking about the absolute value, okay? Which, if you're not really familiar with that, don't worry about it. I'm just saying which one kind of appears larger. So negative 10.9 is the larger one. I'm sticking with it. I'm kind of ignoring this sign right now. Then I'm going to put 6.1 here, and I'm just going to find the difference, okay? I'm going to handle my next step in just a little bit, okay? But first, I'm going to just place my larger number on top. Now I'm gonna subtract, I shouldn't check it, but now the next that's my next step. So I'm gonna subtract. I have nine minus one is eight. I have to do the same thing as before. I need to line up my decimals, and then I drop that down. Now, I can't do zero minus six, so I need to borrow. So I take the next column over and I reduce it by one, and then I give 10 places, okay? So essentially I just move a one over, and now I have 10 minus 6, and that's 4. And then 0 minus, there's nothing there. It's just 4.8. Now, is it positive or negative? This is the critical important step is done subtracting. I need to keep the sign of the larger number. Well, the larger number was negative 10.9. You'll see that it's negative, so this needs to become negative. That's my final answer. Okay, so negative 4.8 is my final answer there. All right, here's another one. Positive 2.2 minus 7.3. Again, I like to consider this as a positive 2.2 and the negative 7.3. They are different signs, so I need to subtract. But I'm not going to subtract this way. There's a lot of mistakes that are made when you subtract this way. Don't do that. You want to put the larger number on top. So I'm going to put a 7.3. I'm going to subtract 2.2. Okay, and I'm just going to start with that. I'm gonna do three minus two, that's one. Seven minus two is five, drop down my decimal. And now I need to decide, is it positive or negative? Well, I need to keep the sign of the larger number. The larger number is negative. Well, it's subtracting a positive. No, okay, like I said before, I like to write it like this, okay? And I keep the sign with it. Whatever sign's in front, that's what it is. 
Now, if there's two signs in front, that's where it gets a little tricky. First off, if it's a plus a negative, which often is the case, you just call it a negative two, okay? That's the sign in front. It's when there's two negative signs that gets tricky, and I'm gonna talk about that in just a moment. So my point is, because this is a negative 7.3, we need to keep the sign of the larger number, negative 5.1, and that's our answer. We found the difference of the two numbers, okay? The difference was 5.1. Those two numbers are 5.1 units away from each other, but it's gonna be negative because the negative is larger. Just real quick, in case you're like so lost, you're like, I have no idea what's going on. The reason why this works out this way is here's one, two. 2.2 is like right about here. And then if we were to subtract 7.3, we would go this, here's zero, one, two. We'd go one, two, three, four, whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then a little bit is 7.3. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Uh, negative 5, and you'll see that we're going to get close to negative 5.1. Okay, so that's why you're moving in that direction. That's why we go, because you're subtracting, go to the left. Okay, so I just wanted a visual of that. Uh, check out my, some of my other videos if you want to see a visual confirmation of using number lines with adding integers. Okay, so that's two from that side. Let's take a look at the second page. Oh, I wanted to talk about... Um, what happens when we have this situation in number 12? So number 12, you have minus minus. What happens, okay? If you have two minus signs together, what do you do? This is the one exception, okay? I know it's like, how can it get any harder? This is it. Once you understand this, then you're done, okay? So if you have the minus minus thing like I just pointed out, we're going to change that to a plus sign. Oftentimes what I tell my students is that's the first thing you're gonna look for. You're gonna go through your entire paper, and you're gonna change all of these into like a plus sign. So you're gonna connect those minus signs and you change it to plus. So that's something that you, you, get, you just gotta do, okay? So subtracting a negative is kind of like a rule where if you turn around and then you turn around again, you're facing the same direction. So you're gonna be positive direction. There's a couple other ways I describe it. Check out some of my integer videos if you wanna see how I describe it. So we're gonna change that to a plus sign and then we apply our normal plus minus rules. Okay, so what I said before with the same scene, same signs, different signs, same teams, different teams, you're going to apply that once you change it. So let's go ahead and show what it looks like on this problem. Okay, so I see the minus minus. I'm going to change it to plus. So I have negative 8.1 plus 8.9. A common mistake I see is students go, oh, I got to change it to plus, plus a negative 8.9. No, we just got rid of that negative sign. Okay, this negative sign essentially evaporated and it became a plus. So don't make it into plus a negative, that's no good, okay? Instead, now we have a new problem. This is our new problem, and clearly we have different signs. So now we're gonna put the bigger one on top, the smaller one on bottom, and we're gonna subtract, okay? So we have nine minus eight is, sorry, nine minus one is eight. Drop the decimal, we get zero, and then we're gonna keep the sign of the bigger number. The bigger number is positive. I know it's like, what? It's positive, yes. It started out negative, but really it's positive. So our answer is positive 0 0.8. Let's look at a couple more. So kind of some random ones. Um, I want it to a, this is, 16 is perfect. So 16 looks like a tough problem. First step you see, we have a minus minus. Get rid of that minus minus. That's our first step. We don't like that. So we have negative 18.278 plus 6.8. We have different signs. We have a minus and we have a plus. So we're gonna subtract. I'm gonna put the larger number on top. This one's 18, this one's six. 18 goes on top. 6.8. I need to fill in some spots. Okay, so I have zero, zero, I'm gonna fill in. Okay, so now I have all my rows, sorry, all my columns lined up. Eight minus zero, eight. Seven minus zero, seven. I can't do two minus eight, I need to borrow. I take one away from the eight, make it seven make it one in front of the next number. I'm basically borrowing 10 units from the, the next column over. So I have 12 minus eight is four, drop down my decimal. Seven minus six is one, and then one, 11.478. Now I need to decide if it's negative or positive. We see that clearly the 18 is the bigger of the numbers, it is a negative sign. So negative 11.478 is our final answer. Okay, so that one's a kind of tough one. Let's take another look at an, uh, a few more. Um, let's take a look at number 22 real quick. 
change it to plus. Okay, all of these you need to change to plus, and maybe we should just go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so this one, this one's going to be two positives. Then we have a plus here. Okay, that one's going to be two positives. We have a plus here, a plus here, and I think that's it. Oh, one here, one here, and that's it. Okay, so that's all of them in this worksheet. So if I would just go ahead and do that first. This would be an important step. Do you remember which problem I was working on? 22, that's right. Okay, so then we have negative 4.8 plus 9.7. The different signs, this one's positive, this one's negative, that means we subtract, bigger one on top, 9.7 on the bottom, I'm going to subtract. 8 minus 7 is 1, I need to borrow 0, 14, you get 5, drop down the decimal, it's a negative sign, that's the bigger number, so negative 5.1 is my final answer. If there's any other uh, of these problems, no, let me do one more, let me do one with 3. So let's do number 30. That one looks like the hardest one on the sheet. Let's go ahead and do it. <clears throat> All right, so let me move this over. More or less, we got what we wanted. Okay, so I have a couple things going on. Number one, let's talk strategy if you have more than one. So strategy is we're going to look for ones that are the same first. So I have a negative 5.6, I have a positive 12.6, and then I have a negative 6.6. I'm going to start with the ones that have the same sign. 6.6 .6 and 5.6 have the same sign, so let's add those two together. Okay, They're both the same, so we know it's going to be minus, and we're just going to add this time, right? So we have 6 plus 6 is 12. Let me go ahead and change my color. So we have 12. I carry, this, carry the 1 up. And now I have uh, 6 plus 5 plus 1. That's also 12. I kept the, the red color, and I have negative 12.2. So negative 12.2 plus 12.6. All I did was simplify this into that, okay? But I still have this left over, okay? And this gets dropped down, and now my new problem is this. Negative 12.2 plus 12.6. They are different signs. I need to stack them and subtract. So I have 4, 0, 0. Okay, so 0 0.4, and I keep the sign of the bigger number. The bigger number was positive, so this answer is positive 0 0.4. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you are confused on anything, make sure to check out some of my other videos. Maybe uh, sooner rather than later, I'll link um, the integer uh, videos I was talking about that helps you with different rules and understanding them. If you have any comments or on these particular questions, just let me a uh, comment saying, hey, I need help with number 28 or whatever number it is, and I'll be uh, sure to help you out. And I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.